Mark chapter number 4. We'll begin reading verse 35. The Bible says, In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose, and he rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the goodness of God. We thank you that we're in the house of God this morning. It's only by your grace we're not all out in, in the world or... Lord, uh, laid up in a hospital bed, or Lord, even worse, uh, uh, outside your grace, we, we'd be in hell today. And Lord, we just bless you and praise you that we can come to church and worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray for those of our folks that are over at the jail, that you'd use them in a great way over there. Bless the men's and women's service there. I pray that inmates would be saved and jailers would be saved I pray that you'd use our people greatly and then I pray for every Sunday school class now I pray for those who are teaching the Lord you'd use them to break the bread of life and I pray for those in their attendance that they'd receive the word with gladness and God may the Sunday school hour prepare us for the worship hour and God, I pray that everything that is said and done throughout the day would honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Help us now. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a, a lot of preaching in this text, and I don't want to do any preaching. I don't want to give you a thought. Uh, but I want you to notice a few things. Notice, first of all, the, the prescript in verse number 35. Notice what he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, the Lord Jesus has been busy ministering. He's been busy teaching. Uh, everywhere he's going at this point, multitudes are coming. The word's got out that if you've got some kind of disease, he can heal you of your disease. It isn't it amazing that people always want something temporal, but they don't want something eternal. And, uh, and, and they're, they've been busy, and he looks at his disciples at the end of the day, and he says, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, can I say that I believe every word of God is inspired, and God breathed, and nothing happens by accident or by chance. And I believe that in our case, but even in their case that day, when Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side, they should have been able to rest in that. They were going to the other side. Yeah. Now, friends, there's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't understand. There's a lot of things going on in this world I can't wrap my brain around. But one thing that I'm sure of, that my sins have been washed away, and I am passing to the other side. And I bless the Lord for that. And we see that. Now, I want you to notice the peril in verse number 37. By the way, in verse 36, it mentioned that there were also with him other little ships. Can I say that that's an interesting verse? He's on one ship with the disciples, and there are other little ships. Can I say that, number one, you're never doing anything alone. That's right. The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. There are people watching our lives. There are people seeking what we have. It may even represent that there are other denominations or other religions trying to go where we're going but we never find anything in the Word of God where they make it. Just something to think about. That didn't cost you any extra, huh? But notice the peril, if you will, in verse 37. There rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Um, listen, I have been on, on a, a lake when a storm blew up, and I was in a little John boat with a little 
motor on the back of it and the waves were so big the motor was coming out we wasn't doing anything but getting tossed in the waves and I want to tell you something that wasn't fun we could see the shore we didn't know if we was getting to the shore hmm? yeah. can I say these men are in this ship and the, the waves blow up on them by the way this storm didn't catch Jesus by surprise that's why he's asleep in the hinder part of the ship but the Bible says that uh, uh, this uh, storm blew up and the winds and the waves overtook them and said then the boat was full of water. Hmm? Now one man said, with Jesus on board, your boat won't sink. That might help some of you. But I've never been in a boat full of water. These men were. Now the Lord's asleep and it's full of water. So how how did that happen? I don't know. I'm just to tell you what the Bible said. Yeah. Hmm? Huh? Now notice their panic. Now I can't identify with this right here. Look at verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillar, and they wake him and say to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now look down at verse number 40. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I mean, they were in panic mode. I would be too. Winds blowing, waves blowing, the, the rain's coming in sideways, the ship's full of water, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking we, we ain't going to cross over. We're going down. Now you got to understand that on this boat were some seasoned fishermen. They had traveled these waters before, but I don't know they've ever been a ship like this before, or, or a storm like this before. Now let me help you with something. You think that maybe this, this storm blew up and this boat got full of water because the enemy tried to kill them on the, on the sea? You think the devil was trying to destroy the Lord Jesus and destroy the work before it got started? Could be. Hmm? But all I know is they started panicking. I would too. I don't see any halos in here. So would you. Hmm? Huh? But then notice the power of God. Look at verse 39. And he arose, and he rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Can I say there are some things only the Lord can do? But there's nothing that he can't do. And he just stands up, rebukes the wind, rebukes the sea, everything goes to a great calm. Now notice he rebuked the wind... But he also rebuked the disciples. He said, why are you so fearful? Have you no faith? He done told them, we're passing over to the other side. But when that wind started blowing and that rain started falling, they forgot the promise. Can I say a lot of times we sitting in church, we're shouting amen, hallelujah, glory to God. But when we get out there in that old sorry no good world and things get to stirring up, we're easily to forget the promises. And by the way, without faith, it's still impossible to please him. Hmm? I'm interested this morning in verse number 38. Closes out, they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They awoke him and say, Carest thou not that we perish? And you know what they're saying? They say, Don't you care? I'm glad he cares, don't you? We know he cares. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. There's nobody that knows the grace of God that could stand up and say, God don't care. Hmm? He has proven over and over and over that he cares. He proved that he cares for us by taking the cross up Calvary and yielding himself to the cross and being suspended between heaven and earth. Uh, there he was beaten and he was bruised. Uh, there they spit upon him. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took our sin. He took our shame. Uh, he became the propitiation and the only means for atonement for our sin. Uh, he died for you and I on the cross of Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He proved he cared 
by going up Calvary's mountain, can I say? He proved he cared by conquering death, hell, and the grave. What a blessing. He's removed the sting of death uh, for his children. The Bible makes it clear uh, uh, that death is the king of terrors. Mm? Everybody's scared to death to die. Mm? Those that are saved, we have a promise that the sting of death has been removed. What a blessing to know that. Mm -mm. Now that don't mean I, I want to die right now. But when it comes my time to die, he'll give me grace to face it. And then, mm, Brother Josh, Christians die different than sinners. Christians die and just go to sleep, wake up in glory. Uh, sinners die and go to hell. And boy, he conquered our death. He conquered our hell. I don't have to worry about going to hell. Uh, what a Savior. He proved he cares. He cares. He cared by uh, proving it by the cross of Calvary, by conquering death, hell, and the grave. He proves he cares because he left us the church. What a blessing to have the church. Thank God for the church. You ever think where your life would be without the church? Hmm? Oh, he cares. He proved he cares by uh, uh, conserving his word. Aren't you glad that we have the word of God? Aren't you glad that I don't have to worry about uh, whether or not it is or isn't his word? Hmm? I'm glad I don't have a false Bible today. I'm glad I've got the very word of God. He preserved it uh, for his people. What a blessing. Hmm? And I, I, uh, Listen, I, I was, this week, I was looking at some things, and there's a whole remnant of people out there. All they do is watch videos of independent Baptist preachers and look for some way that they can accuse us of anything and run these videos all over and talk about how sorry we are and how uh, uh, because we believe King James Bible only and because we believe in living a clean life and because we believe in acting like you're saved and all those kind of things. Boy, they don't like it. Hmm? I haven't found my name on a few of them sites. What a blessing. Uh, these morons do not get satire. They need to go back and watch a little Archie Bunker. It might help them. Uh, I was preaching one night, and I was preaching on the church of Laodicea. And I preached that we're in a Laodicean type age, and you can see it by how churches have become comfortable, how they've uh, uh, now embraced rock bands and lowered the lights and how they got fog machines and all this. Well, they, they blasted me saying that I said the church of Laodicea back 2,000 years ago had a rock band. They're morons. They took about a seven-second clip and tried to write me off. Uh, I'm glad that we have the truth. And I'm glad God's keeping a record. And I'm glad that the Lord's not a moron. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. He put it down exactly what we needed to know. He didn't fill in all the blanks. He didn't even tell us all that Jesus did. Uh, uh, the Bible says if, uh, if we would have recorded all that Jesus did when he walked among men, the world couldn't contain the books. Huh? But he told us exactly what we needed to know. And I'm glad that we have his word. It shows he cares. Can I say it shows he cares because of the compassion he has for us and for mankind. And we know 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. But in Jeremiah 31, 3, that says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, we make a mistake sometimes saying, Well, when I was unlovable, but friend, that's a misstatement. There's never been a time you haven't been loved by God. Even in your darkest days of depravity, God loved you. Hmm? Uh, what a blessing to know that. Hmm? You see, we have a sense of unworthiness once we get saved, and we want to revert back to thinking about how sorry we were and that how could God love us, but he did love us. Boy, I enjoyed that Wednesday night. If you wasn't here on the difference between that altar of incense and then that, that brazen altar. A lot of us want to stay at that brazen altar. We're filled with guilt and shame, and we want to remind God of all that we used to be. 
But if you can ever get past that to that altar of incense, that altar of praise and worship, uh, that altar where you truly have that intimate relationship and that ongoing communication with God that will bless your heart. But God loves us. And I'm glad He cares. huh? He cares because He brought conviction to our life. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of people today don't believe in Holy Ghost conviction. Mm -mm. I'm glad godly sorrow worketh repentance. Mm. Mm. With loving kindness he drew us. Mm. I didn't wake up one day and say, boy, I'm going to try out God. No. Uh, I didn't even retain God in my knowledge. He came to where I was. He arrested my heart. He drew me to himself, and I blessed the Lord. For conviction. I'm glad I got lost so I could get saved. What a blessing. That just shows he cares, huh? I'm glad he cares because he converted us. Hmm? You see, uh, he takes sinners and he makes saints out of them. He doesn't take sinners and dust them off and tell them to live as they want to. He converted me. Hmm? Uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I've been converted. I had an old man run in my life. Now I have a new man in my life. And I'm sealed into the Holy Ghost of promise. I'm glad that he cares. He changed us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I'm glad he changed me. I'm glad things I used to love, I don't love anymore. Amen. Things I used to hate, now I love. What happened, Jesus? That's what happened. He cares. So they come and they ask him. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I mean, he'd already done so much for them. They should know that he cares. But they didn't know. But I got to thinking about this. What if he didn't care? What if the Lord really didn't care? Hmm? Can I say, if the Lord did not care... We'd have no hope. We'd have no reason to get out of bed in the morning. Mm -mm. You realize if the Lord didn't care, we would have no hope of redemption. There would be no forgiveness of sins. There'd be no salvation. We would live our meaningless lives and die and go to hell. Well, I'm glad he cares. But if he didn't care, we'd have no hope. We'd have no hope of resurrection. Hmm. I'm glad that to know that if one day I cross over and they put this old body in the ground, it's not staying in the ground. I'm glad, hallelujah, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm glad for the hope of resurrection. But if Jesus didn't care, we wouldn't have that hope. Can I say this? I'm glad for the hope of revival this week. I'm glad Jesus is for his church. I'm glad he wants to revive his church and revive his people. I want, I'm glad that he wants us to shine his lights in this dark world. I'm glad that he wants to do a work that only he can get the credit for. Hmm? You know why there's not a lot of revivals? Because people are counting on the preacher to bring it. When people get their eyes on the Lord, they might just get revived. Uh, but if he didn't care, we wouldn't have no hope for a revival. Hmm? Can I say, if he didn't care, we wouldn't have the hope of the rapture. Hmm? Boy, I'm listening for the trumpet. Boy, everything's winding down this world. What's going on over there in Israel? And what's going on in our country? I mean, think about it. In three years, look how chaotic our country's become. Hmm? I mean, I've never seen a day where not only the politicians ignore the law, even the judges ignore the law. They, see, they, they seem they want to push it as far as they can. I guess they're trying to bring out the redneck in us. I don't know what it is. But can I say, I'm looking for the rapture. Can I tell you the only reason he hasn't taken his church out of here, he still wants to save sinners. Hmm? If he didn't care, we'd have no hope. 
If he didn't care, we would have no help. We would cry what the psalmist cried in Psalms 142.4. He said, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. That's where we'd be if the Lord didn't care. We'd have no help. We'd have no comforter. Thank the Lord for the comforter. Jesus told his disciples he must go away that the comforter might come. I'm glad for the Holy Ghost. I'm glad he walks with us and talks with us. I'm glad he leads us and guides us into all truth. Uh, I'm glad you can't step into a mud puddle that he's not telling you don't step into the mud puddle. Uh, hey, and I'm glad even if we do ignore him or quench him and step in the mud puddle, he'll convict us till we get the mud puddle cleaned off of us. Uh, I'm glad for the Holy Ghost uh, that gives us a peace that passes all understanding when things in our lives are going awry. I'm glad for help. And if Jesus didn't care, we would have no help. We'd have no comforter. We'd have no confidant. Aren't you glad for a friend that's sticking closer than a brother? If Jesus didn't care, we wouldn't have that friend. Mm -hmm. We not only wouldn't have no comforter, no confidant, but hey, if he didn't care, we'd have no chances. Can I say I'm glad that God's the God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, sixth chances, seven chances, eight chances. Say how many times he told Peter 70 times seven, and that's just the starting point. Uh, how many times have we failed the grace of God? Yet all we got to do is say, Father, and then he just embraces us. I'm glad he cares. If he didn't care, we'd have no hope. We'd have no help. I thought about this. If he didn't care... We'd have no haven. Where would we be in this world if we didn't have a release? Now, there's a lot of people in this world, they think they've got a release. Some of them think that it's in a sports team until the sports team loses. I imagine there it's morning big time in the state of Georgia today. I preach in Georgia a lot. Them, them rednecks down there are crazy now. Uh-uh. They probably couldn't even get out of bed and go to church today. Their dogs got the dog knocked out of them last night, huh? Should call Brother Cody. How's them dogs doing? He's probably blessing them out down there at his church this morning. Hmm? Uh, some people think they find a haven in sports. Some think they have, they find a haven in pleasures in, of sin for a season. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem with dope is after a few hits, you don't get high on it no more. You got to go something stronger, right. and something stronger, and something stronger, and it and you're never satisfied. Right. You know why it is absolutely heinous that they are allowing marijuana to be legal? That's just the first step to something stronger. That's right. And you know why they're letting it be legal? It's not for tax dollars. It's so they can control people. Mm. Uh, people think they find a haven in that until they realize that becomes a bondage to them. If, we, if Jesus didn't care, we wouldn't have any haven. We wouldn't have the sanctuary. What a blessing we can come out from among the world and come amongst our kind and we don't have to deal with any of the chaos going on in this world, but we can come and we can worship the Lord. Uh, aren't you glad for people that are like-minded? Aren't you glad for people that have a kindred spirit? There are some places out there that calls themselves a church I wouldn't fit in. I don't have the same spirit they've got. Mm -mm. But aren't you glad for a haven? I don't care how crazy it gets. I know that Sunday's coming. I know Wednesday's coming. I get to be in church. Uh, we wouldn't have the haven of the sanctuary. Don't you feel sorry for folks that are on a golf course this morning or going ice fishing this morning or going to grocery store this morning? Don't realize right here in the midst of their neighborhood is a place where they can find someone who cares. Hmm. We wouldn't have the haven of the sanctuary. We wouldn't have the haven of the scriptures. I don't know how many times I've been troubled that I can just find my way to the scriptures and I'll find some help. I'll find some rest from whatever's troubling me. Thank the Lord for the haven of the scriptures, the haven of the sanctuary.
Thank the Lord for the haven of the saints. What a blessing to have fellow brothers and sisters that we can just bear one another's burdens, that we can just spend time with and fellowship with. Isn't it a blessing to have folks you can fellowship with? There's some people I just can't fellowship with. If every other word I got to cringe and stop my ears up, I can't fellowship with them. But isn't it good to come around the saints of God we can fellowship and have a good time? Enjoy one another's company. We wouldn't have I dare say we wouldn't even know one another had not the Spirit of God done a work in our lives. Hmm? We all come from different places, different backgrounds, different cultures, different and, and we wouldn't even like one another had not the Holy Ghost changed our lives. And then he fitly frames us together, puts people in our life, huh? I'll never forget when I met Brother Greg, we was down there at Brother Bobby Cato's. And services broke, we was down there camp meeting, we was in the fellowship hall, and he walks up and just asked my name. We started fellowship and we became best of friends. We've been best of friends for well over 20 years now. Hmm? Uh, say, how'd that happen? Because Jesus cares. He knew I'd need that man in my life, and he knew that man would need me in his life. God just knows how to do all that stuff. And uh, what a blessing to have a haven. But if Jesus didn't care, we'd have no hope, no help, no haven. I thought about this. If Jesus didn't care, we wouldn't have a hero. You know, Jesus has never lost at anything. Can I say this? Jesus has never even been challenged. Mm hmm. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's the champion of champions. Hmm? But we wouldn't know that if he didn't care. If he didn't care, we wouldn't have him to admire. I don't know about you, but I admire Jesus. I read about him and I think, what a Savior. Hmm? Huh? I don't know about y'all. Sometimes I like them movies with little blood and guts in them. Uh, I like when they come on TV because they cut a lot of language out of them or something. But you know, you know when 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 somebody takes a nine millimeter with one mag and he shoots four hundred men, something about that guy, you know. Uh, I mean, how many how many people's John Wick shoot with one one mag in his pocket? I don't know. Well, sometimes I just like to see things get blown up, Brother Jim, you know. I just, I just like it that way, huh? I, I do. I just like it. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's just the, the carnality coming out in me because carnality likes carnage. What can I say? But, you know, I read over there when Jesus comes back literally to this world and he lands on the Mount of Olives, he splits it in two, and he's going to go to business, friend. We're going to sit there and watch him, and he's got a sharp two-edged sword going out of his mouth, and it, it says the destruction at, at the Valley of Megiddo, the Battle of Armageddon, he said there's, there's going to be so many that he'll destroy that the blood will flow all the way to the bit of the horse's mouth. Huh? You say, what are you, what are you saying? I'm saying, you don't want to mess with Jesus. Amen. Uh, there are some things that Jesus don't, it don't even get his attention. How many people know where Thornhill Racetrack is? Just the people living in Independence. When I was a teenager four decades ago, five decades ago, four decades ago, a long time ago, Miss Cinda. Uh, my cousins used to race over there. It was a drag race strip. They'd race cars over there. And uh, I'd go, and it was a blessing because I got to be in the pits with them. And you'd see all these guys' cars and everything. There was one guy. He'd pull a 63 Corvette in on a trailer. That car never came off the trailer. Then while the guys are running and running their cars and running their cars and they're making times and they're running their cars and they're running their cars. I've seen a lot of them blow up their cars. I've seen, I seen one night, Brother Ron, a guy on a motorcycle, the transmission blew about halfway down the track. I don't know how he kept it on two wheels. I don't, you know. Uh, but then they would come to what they called the money round. Winner take all. That guy'd fire up that vet, roll it off that trailer. He'd run it one time. He'd win the money. Every time. Hmm? 
When he pulled in, everybody else knew they had no shot at the money. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying Jesus don't even get off the trailer most of the time. Yeah. I read where he sent an angel and whipped about 100,000 Syrians in one night. Right. Didn't even get Jesus' attention. Right. Hmm? Can I say, whenever he does get off the trailer, trust me, there ain't no hope for whoever's coming against him. Hmm? And if God be for us, who can be against us? Hmm? Uh, we'd have no one to admire. Boy, I admire him. Hmm? Uh, we'd have no one to adore. I adore him. I love him. Uh, all that he's done for me in my life, uh, I shudder to think where I'd be without the Lord. Everything I had came from the hand of God. Uh, God's been good to us. He's blessed us, and I bless his holy name. I, I, I adore him. I'm glad he cared for me. Because I truly do adore him. I love him. I admire him. And I aspire to see him. Hmm? I'm glad we're going to see him as he is. Hmm? A lot of people think that he's just a fairy tale. Just hang on. They're going to see him too. But in a whole different light than we're going to see him. Uh I'm going to see him as he is. Hey, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. I say glory to God. Hmm? What a blessing. But if he didn't care, we wouldn't have a hero. And I thought about this. If he didn't care, we'd have no heaven. There'd be no streets of gold, no walls of jasper, no gates of pearl, no crystal river, no praise and worship from the four and twenty elders. There would not be a multitude that no man can number, crying, worthy is the land to receive power, riches, and glory. We wouldn't know any of that. Have no hope for any of it. If he didn't care. But he cares. And I'm glad he cares. And he's still seeking to save that which is lost. And he's still seeking to help his people. He's for you. Say, preacher, why is this going on in my life? I don't know why it's going on in your life, but Jesus cares. But I do know this. If it's going on in your life, it didn't happen by an accident. It had to go through his hand to get to you. And if it went through his head, he's already filtered out anything you can handle. And he's allowed it to come into your life so he can use it to show others how great he is in your life. Uh, we watched, uh, Miss Nett and I watched um, Brother Greg Neal's dedication of the Amanda Ranch out there in New Mexico. And to think 23 years ago he had a daughter died eight months old that's Ella's age after being sick her entire life and in and out of hospitals and they hadn't even changed their own living room into a hospital and they watched her die and to hear that man say that we was praying that God would heal her he said and he did not the way we were praying but he healed her and they said, and I didn't want her life to be in vain. He said, I wanted her life to count for something. So God put it in his heart, and now they had the Amanda Ranch. They, they dedicated it on her birthday last Thursday. She'd been 23. And they have a place where people who are suffering, people who are grieving, people who are hurting, people who are facing any kind of hardship they can go there at no cost and get some help there's a staff there there's people there there's a church there there's folks that can be good to them and show them kindness and help them he said because shortly after Amanda passed there was somebody who was very kind to him and his family and paid for him to go on vacation and that helped them to reconnect and that helped them with the grief they were suffering. And so now he has a place where people can go and find some help. We was watching that. And I thought, what a blessing. Friend, I don't know why you're going through what you're going through. But he'll tell you they went through that to enjoy her for the eight months. She was a gift. But now they get to share her with anybody else who's hurting and maybe help them in their lives. Too many times we look at things as a problem. 
it might just be a possibility for God to move in our lives and work to bring glory to himself. All I know is he cares. Cares more than we can ever imagine. I thought about this. We may just see a move of God this week if we would be grateful for him caring and we would reciprocate the caring to others. Hmm. Listen, God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And God wants to send revival. God wants to help us this week. Now here's what you need to do. You need to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. Don't quench him. Don't grieve him. You need to be in your place. And be ready to receive what God has for us. You know, I've heard people say, Oh, man, you're going to have some great revival preaching. What is that? Isn't any preaching reviving? Huh? It don't matter about the messenger or his mannerism. It matters about the message. What is God trying to say to us? And then when he says it, we're to receive it and apply it and do what he says. And when we do that, he'll give us something else. And then when we do that, he'll give us something else. And the more we do, the more he starts working in our lives before long we'll be revived Amen. too many people are waiting for fire to fall from heaven if it did it would consume us we don't need fire from heaven we need a spark kindled inside and get to stirring and as friends we're so far removed from fire falling from heaven we're just dried sticks it'd burn us up so God help us to get what we need, embrace it, and get us to a place at one point somewhere out there we're blazing for his glory. It all starts with us realizing he cares. He cares for us today. So never lose sight of the fact Jesus cares. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.